Does it say it's recording? No. Okay. All right, so we're continuing on with our... Uh, uh, it's showing up on us. Yeah, so we're continuing on with the um, study of the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today we're going to get into chapter three. But before we do, we have a short poem that uh, I like to say beforehand. And it's called The World of Scripture. It says, Welcome to my world. Place where the natural eyes can't see, where your physical bodies can't be, where the last is first, the first is last, the end is told from the beginning, when it appears as though one is losing. They're actually winning. Where trumpets are depicted as voices, the persecuted righteous don't complain, but actually rejoice. Here, swords are likened to the word, the demons of bird, the dead are yet alive and living are actually dead. Blood and flesh are even predict, depicted as wine and bread. It's a place wherein the humble are depicted as poor, and the poor one becomes the later found to be that much richer. I'm speaking of no other place than the gospel world of scripture. So turn off your phones, perk up your ears, and get ready to listen. For the Ruach HaKodesh is about to begin to teach. Hallelujah. All right. So as for mentioned, today we're going to get into Genesis chapter 3. And so starts off with verse 1. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have Elohim said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. All right, so we're going to take a look at some of these terms here. First of all, is the serpent. We're going to look at the serpent. It's nakash in the Hebrew, number 5175. It speaks to a serpent or a snake, you know, but it's important um, to understand that it's, it's from its hiss. You know, so it speaks to a serpent or snake from its hiss. It's from um, Nakash, number 5172, meaning to hiss, that is to whisper, mm -hmm. you know, and so it speaks to a whisper, it speaks to whispering, you know, now, it speaks of uh, the serpent as being subtle, what is this word subtle, it's our room in the Hebrew number 6175, and it speaks to that which is subtle, that is, that which is difficult to perceive, mm -hmm something that's sensible, I meaning it's, 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 um, it's perceptible to the, to the senses. It's difficult to perceive, you know, from the senses, you know, and from Aram, the root of it means to be or make bare, you know, so that's subtle. And then you have the beast, which is Kai, you know, number 2416, which speaks to something that's living, you know, and so um, if you recall from the In the Beginning series, you know, when we were going through the seven days of creation, you know, Kai or the living creatures upon the earth spoke to de devotions. So we see that the serpent speaks to a devotion, i.e. something that's, um, that's dedicated to something um, that's dedicated to a cause or a devotion is dedicating something to a cause. If you're devoted to something, you're being dedicated to, to a cause, you know, now, so we put all that together and we learned that the serpent is a whisperer that's difficult to perceive, even though he's devoted to making us bare. that is devoted to stripping us of our covering, you know, and that's really important to, to remember. You know, because this is how the serpent works in our lives. You know, he whispers, he whispers things, you know, um, to us, you know, and that will make us bear, that will work yeah. to make us bear, but it's difficult to perceive his whispering. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, and so this is really, really important that we understand this, you know, because this is one of our numero uno foes. You know, this is one of the, the number one foes that we have to contend with, you know? And so we need to know his nature, you know? So his nature, he's a he, he's something that, that's living, he's living, you know, but he's, he's a living devotion. He has a living devotion to make us bear. Mm -hmm. You know, his life is about, is devoted to, 
making us bare, to stripping us of, of our cover. You know, and he does so via his whispers. Everybody with me? Yes. And of course, whispers, you know, speaks to words. You know, and so this is why words are likened to a serpent. You know, um, so we see in Psalms 140, verse 3, it, it teaches us, it says, they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Irish poison is under their lips. Say a lot. So you can see that, again, you know, a serpent is likened unto words. Hits these whispers. You know, uh, also consider Ecclesiastes 10, verse 11 says, surely the serpent will bite without enchantment and a babbler is no better. <laughs> you know, because a babbler is one that just issues out words, you know, arbitrarily. They just babble, <laughs> you know. Um, and so this is why it's, it's this is why it's important sometimes to just learn to stay mute because you know the enemy can use your words you know he can use your words you know to cause someone to become bare so you know this is why you know words are very very important you know um, scripture teaches that you know that in the end we'll be judged by every idle word that comes out of our mouth you know um, so that's, that's pretty huge, right? You know, seeing that some people don't stop talking, mm. you know, that's, that's pretty huge, <laughs> you know, so say a on that. All right. Now also in verse one, it spoke of eating out of, of every tree of the garden. What exactly is a, this, this tree, you know, um, it's, it's, in the um, Hebrew number 6086, and it speaks to a tree, but it's it's important to note that it speaks to a tree from its firmness. From its firmness, you know, it's from atza, meaning to fasten, to make firm. And it also speaks to that, which is um, means to close the eyes shut, which is which is interesting because that's one of the first things that you we're gonna notice that the serpent says is that. Oh, the fruit of this tree will cause your eyes to become open. <laughs> you know? Yeah, say loud on that one. <laughs> so, as aforementioned, again, in the uh, the series of in, in the beginning, you know, um, we spoke of a tree and a tree speaking to a principle. You know, so these trees, of course, sprout forth from seeds. Amen? And, and um, within that series, we, we talked about the seed being the word of Elohim. You know, that's a type of seed, you know, but there's also other words. They're also seeds. And those seeds, you know, they sprout forth. And they become plants and trees and vines. And they, be, they bear fruit. You know, and so this is part of why you'll get judged for every idle word that you speak because those words are seeds. And they're planted within the hearts of men. Right. You know, so it's really important that you uh, consider what kind of seeds you tossing around. What kind of seeds you planting in other people. Amen? Especially if it's Yah's people. You know, so... A tree speaks to a principle. A principle is a fundamental law, doctrine, or assumption of scripture. You know, a scriptural principle, I should say, is a fundamental law, doctrine, or assumption of scripture. So let us consider a tree from the Garden of Elohim. You know, and as aforementioned, a tree speaks to uh, something that grew from, from a word, you know, and a principle, you know, and a fundamental law, doctrine, or assumption of scripture, such as what we find in Exodus 20, verse 4. This is a fundamental law. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above 
or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Amen. You know, um, and this this is under the the, uh, the the guise of you know, especially worshiping it in, in our essence. You know, but this is a principle. You know, now Genesis three two says, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. All right, so question that the serpent asked was, you know, yea, have Elohim said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And so she's answering and saying, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. You know, now this fruit, let's talk about fruit for a minute, you know, because uh, these are fundamental concepts that we need to understand you know, if we're going to, you know, get the fullness out of what's being said, you know, uh, we have to learn to see everything we're looking at. So fruit is the produce, i.e. the manifestation or end result of a seed. Hence, fruit represents the manifestation of the seed's essence brought forth and multiplied. You know, so let's take a look at a few examples of fruit that came forth from the above tree. So we're going to take a look at some fruit that came forth from this tree found in Exodus 24, 20 verse 4. You know, thou should not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in, in the water under earth. So, all right. Let me have my first reader read Judges 6, 28, 1 Kings 15, 11 through 13, and 2 Kings 23, 4. Judges 6, 28. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down, and the grove was cut down that was by it, and the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. 1 Kings 15, 11 through 13. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did Dawid, his father. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. And also Ma'aka, his mother, even her he removed from being queen because she had made an idol and a grove. And Asa destroyed her idol and burned it by the brook Kedron. Genesis 2 Kings 23-24. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards, and the images, and the idols, and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in uh, Jerusalem, did Josiah put away, that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Melchiah, the priest, found in the house of Yehud. Hallelujah. Thank you. Okay, so again, the tree is, thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything. You know, and the fruit that came from this tree, you know, is the manifestation of it, you know, in, 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 you know, in society or the manifestation that, you know, which speaks to that which we can see, that which came directly from it, you know, such as we read about it in Judges 6, 28, where Gideon, you know, um, cast down the altar of Baal and cut down the grove that was by it, you know, this was the fruit of that tree in Exodus 20 verse 4. This is this is why he he done that. You know, so that was the tree and this is the fruit of the tree. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what what uh um Yochanan and Mercer was speaking about when he said, you know, when the Pharisees and Sadducees Sadducees were coming to him and uh, wanted to be baptized and he would tell them bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Amen. You know, so yeah, you know, they 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 um they knew the tree you know but they wasn't bringing any fruit from the tree they wasn't manifesting you know that repentance in their lives amen you know so you know this is this is what is speaking about these works that stem from this this tree that it's what it brings forth it's what it manifests from the tree you know and so the seed is the word of Elohim we're the trees you know and our actions are the fruit you know, this is why, you know, the uh, spine of the body or and even the torso and the spine is referred to as the trunk. Mm 
Mm. If you look it up in a dictionary, it'll tell you it's the trunk. Mm. The arms and legs are called limbs. Mm -hmm. You know, these are references to trees, mm. you know, because we are trees. We're walking trees, mm. you know, and so, you know, the, the seed is the word of Elohim. We're the trees and the fruit is our actions or our actions. You know, and so here it is. We see the fruit of Exodus 20, verse 4, found in Judges 6, 28, also in 1 Kings, where uh, King Asa removed all the idols that his fathers had made, you know, and even removed his mother from being queen because she made an idol in a grove, and he destroyed her idol and burnt it, you know. And so, you know, again, this is the fruit of that tree called in in the garden in Exodus 20, verse 4. And also we see in 2 Kings, likewise, says, moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abomination that were spied in the land of Yahuda and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away. You know, so even though these are three different individuals, they're, they're all manifesting fruit from that same tree. Uh, that's Exodus 20, verse 4, that same word. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, imagine all the saints that done likewise throughout the years mm -hmm. and how that fruit originated from that one seed. You see that? Yeah. You know, can you picture that in your mind? Mm -hmm. You know, here it is. You have that, that one seed and it brought forth all these trees that manifested all these actions based upon that one word, that one seed. Amen? Now, with this in mind, imagine if you were to eat just one good seed. That good seed would in turn have the, the potential to, to produce many fruits or many good manifestations in your actions. With each Fruit or good manifestation containing anywhere from one to a multitude of seeds in and of itself to perpetuate the said manifestations. You know, so, you know, you can consume one good seed and it can cause you to produce many good actions or manifest many good actions. This is, this is producing fruit from that seed, you know, so it can cause you the tree to produce many good fruit or many good actions from that one seed and each one of those fruits will have a multitude of seeds in it of itself so when i go and i do something good i manifest something good in my actions those everyone who see that action has just received a seed from that fruit. Mm -hmm. And that fruit now can get in their heart and begin to grow in them and cause them to do likewise. Yeah. I pray you can see how that works. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and so this is how the seed just perpetuates itself. And this is why, you know, we can read about apples and different fruit, you know, and grapes and different fruit from thousands of years ago. And we still see them here today because the seed perpetuates itself from the fruit. But you don't just plant a seed and get a seed. You plant a seed and you get a multitude of seeds because there's many seeds in one piece of fruit. Or there can be, or it can be one too many seeds in, 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 in one piece of fruit. And so, you know, when you understand this, you also understand the bastardization of the fruit that's going on today, whereby they're making it to not have seeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say loud now, because, mm -hmm. you know, that's beyond the scope of this message, but it's worth, it was worth knowing. Mm -hmm. You know, now imagine that it was an evil seed that one ate. Mm -hmm. It would likewise manifest fruit 
That is evil actions and perpetuate them. Now, say lie on that one. Think about that one as we continue forward. Um, Genesis 3, 3 through 6, my next reader, please. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Hmm. For Elohim doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave unto her husband with her, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Okay, so, you know, we're told that Elohim said, don't eat it. The serpent says, says, you know, nah, you know, he lying. You know, he, you know, he said, he said, don't eat it and you'll die. Now nah, he lying. You're not gonna die. Mm -mm. Nope. And in fact, you're gonna be as gods, knowing good and evil. You know, and so I guess that was appealing that they wanted to be as as gods, you know not realizing they were already as gods because they were made in his likeness and his image amen you know nevertheless they fell for the okie doke mm. you know so she took the fruit thereof she ate she gave it to her husband he ate you know and that evil seed mm. got in them mm. and that evil seed would take root and sprout forth because they were very fertile ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were very good ground, remember? Yeah, they were. Yeah. You know? And so this evil seed would then be perpetuated, mm. you know, and it would bring forth, you know, fruit with a bunch more evil seeds in it, mm. which in turn would bring forth other fruit with a bunch more multitudes of other evil seeds in it and on and on and on now you see why every man it's appointed to every man to die once mm -hmm. amen right. now genesis 3 7 says and the eyes of them both were opened mm -hmm. you know um and they knew that they were naked mm -hmm. and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now in Genesis 2.25, it spoke of them, you know, being naked and not ashamed. So they didn't, they didn't, they wasn't ashamed, so they didn't feel any need to cover themselves because they had no guilt or shame. Hmm. Amen. Now, obviously, something has changed because now they feel the need to cover themselves. You know, they are ashamed, they're guilty, you know, they know evil. Wasn't good enough just to read about evil, just to know that it existed. They had to experience it, huh? you know. Say lie, mm. you know. But what I want to focus on is the nakedness. This word "naked" is Aram, number fifty-nine on three. It speaks to nudity. It's from Amram, number sixty-one ninety-one, meaning to be or make bare. Do you remember that yeah. is exactly? what the serpent's mm -hmm. goal was. Right. Mm -hmm. So I pray you can see, see now that the serpent has achieved its goal. Mm -hmm. Now that Adam and the woman, Adam and woman are naked, you know, because that is what a serpent does. That's, it's devoted to making us naked. Mm -hmm. It's devoted to stripping us of our covering. Mm -hmm. And of course, Yah is our covering. Yeah. And so this is what he did with Adam and woman. He stripped them of their covering. He caused them to 
become uncovered by Yah. I pray you can see that. You know, because that is how he did it in the beginning, and that's how he's going to do it in the end. You know, consider Revelations 12, 9 through um, 11. It says, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, hello serpent, mm -hmm. called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So here it is, the old serpent, the old the old whisperer that's devoted to making us bare, devoted to stripping us of our covering, stripping us of our covering of Yah. And it says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come the salvation and strength and, and the kingdom of our Elohim and the power of his, uh, of his Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, but um, I should have put up here where it speaks about him spewing a flood out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. That flood speaks to words that, again, is the, are devoted to making us bare, to yeah. stripping us of our covering. It speaks to a flood of lies, a flood of deceit, even as he deceived Adam and woman. You know, so this is, you know, really important that, you know, we understand how the serpent works. You know, how he, is he working in our lives? Because he's still working in our lives the same way he worked in Adam and the woman's life. You know, and that is, that is the, uh, the whole gist of what I want to get across today. Mm -hmm. You know, now remember the woman represents what? The priesthood. Mm -hmm. You know, in the priesthood, it's the priest's responsibility to keep the people covered. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, and so it just makes sense that the enemy will go after, after the covering. The cover, the one whose responsibility it is to keep everybody covered. Because he's devoted to uncovering them. So, of course, he's going to go to the one who covers them. Yeah. I pray that you can see that. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's all I have for today. Prayer was a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 H